hi, welcome once again to this uh, series of ours on the news click uh, and the series that we're running on the Central Vista. And um, as many of our viewers are aware of the fact that earlier this series used to be Walk the Central Vista, but now we can't walk the Central Vista because of the pandemic and because of uh, the corridors that have been developed. Uh, but at least we can discuss uh, uh, through through the through the web and through online meetings. And uh, uh, today uh, we are very happy and glad to have Mr. Prem Chandavarkar, who is uh, an architect by profession, but who is also a very uh, prolific writer and who writes uh, on different subjects from architecture to philosophy to politics, uh, and you know, of course. He is quite inherently and organically linked to this, uh, what I call, which many architects don't believe and don't uh, think that it is true, the movement, uh, uh, you know, against against the, the kind of central vista that we are uh, seeing in Delhi. So thank you and welcome, uh, Prem, to, to, to be here with us. Uh, well, I, I think, Prem, uh, in, in these series of episodes and also enormous writings and phenomenal kind of works that we have seen, uh, actually, uh, who are contesting the whole idea of, uh, uh, of the Central Vista, we have seen people from different shades, actually, and people actually contesting the, the basic premise of the idea, terming it uh, very fascist, uh, very despotic, uh, very totalitarian. Uh, but also, uh, someone pointed out that, look, it's also to do something with the Vastu. That's why dates are very, very important. Uh, then uh, also usurping the public spaces, how the public spaces have been occupied in this whole uh, uh, whole decision-making process. Uh, but then we also know the trajectory. How And of course, then we had uh, uh, people who went uh, very recently to the Supreme Court and again came back to the High Court. Uh, uh, you know, that during the pandemic, at least spare the workers, but, you know, the workers were not spared. In fact, the petitioner was fined, I think, rupees one lakh for making such frivolous petitions. So we have all that on record. But something very new happened. But there's one, one I think, very important undercurrent flowing. And that is, despite the fact that the government has got a very clean chit from the Supreme Court, uh, by a 2-1 ruling, uh, the government is actually a little shaky and panicky. And that's why we are finding, uh, you know, many dossiers, many uh, rebuttals from the government, uh, myth and realities. And we have also seen uh, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs re uh, responding to one of the articles, which they shouldn't have. I mean, if they're, they're, they're so clear. So we can easily understand that there's something going on, which is, uh, you know, which is, uh, which is really jittering this government. So what is this new that has developed? I mean, uh, uh, is it is it, uh, 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 that really bothers bothers the government? And, uh, so I think, Prem, from there. Uh, I, I think what is new is uh, uh, it's in the context of the critique the government has uh, received in their response to the second wave of the pandemic, which, as you know, was a very traumatic uh, second wave for many people. Yeah. And a lot of unnecessary deaths just because the infrastructure could not cope up. Uh, the the uh, draw, you know the slowing down of the vaccination program. So in the context of that, when a critic of Central Vista also arises, they feel they're being attacked on multiple fronts. So they're a little more sensitive now, and feel they have to come to some kind of a, a you know defense. So I think that that is that is the change. Otherwise, they're really not to bother. bother the so bother, it's uh, more of a okay. So more of a, of a cover up exercise that they're trying to do. Yeah, it's a contextual. Uh, and but one of the things that uh, they have not really addressed in the in the sort of justifications they've given, and unfortunately that was not the yardstick the majority judgment in the Supreme Court followed either, is this this is the epicenter of our democracy. So it okay. should really represent the highest democratic ideals, not the lowest common denominator. You know, so what does that mean? By, what does that it mean, Prem? It, it means that it should be uh, democratically debated. It should have been public. Parliament should not have been bypassed. Okay. Uh, parliamentary oversight, which is normal in such projects, should have been there. All the things that you'd expect of a democracy are uh, should have been there. And actually, if you see the dissenting judgment of Justice Sanjeev Khanna, 
who uh, yeah. comes from an interesting lineage because he is the nephew of uh, Justice H R Khanna, who was the sole yeah. dissenting judge in the uh, Supreme Court verdict yeah. on the emergency in 1976. Yeah. Uh, he has been quite uh, strident in saying that uh, uh, the government has fallen short on issues of public consultation, taking consideration of public objections, heritage conservation. Um, so, so uh, the Supreme Court—it's just one judge who held sway. It was a three-judge bench, and it was a two-one yeah. uh, yeah. judgment. And the dissenting judgment is quite strong in. shortcomings of the project okay prem so uh, yeah i think that that's that's quite important the opaqueness of the entire project i mean that has been highlighted right since the beginning yeah. but i think something new has also happened and that uh, if, just correct me and that's what i'm going to ask you the central common secretary that is uh, 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 that is going to come up and you know uh, 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 the kind of design the kind of uh, built in area and you know, the impact that it will have on on the environment so uh, what is new in it and what is faulty in this entire uh, you know uh, process that that is being done now uh, what is new is that they've just submitted that for uh, environmental approval so some data has come but not complete data um, so this central secretary it extends from where to where it extends from vijay chowk out up to the india gate hexagon so it's really the main vista itself okay yeah yeah and uh, what they have done which that that was known right from the beginning of the project they have removed all public space from this section of the vista which is the main vista hmm. uh they're saying we've compensated with 50 acres of public space and a new arboretum carved out of the president estate and things like that but that arboretum is at, uh, uh, entered from the area west of rashtrapati bhavan from mother yeah. teresa crescent it's not part of yeah. the main vista experience <laughs> and the the yeah. vista which was center of the vista which the junction of rajpath and janpath which was supposed to be a culture hub which had three culture institutions over there the national archives the national museum and the indira gandhi national center of art all that's displaced and now the entire vista is lined by government institutions yeah and uh, the architect uh, likes to compare what he's doing to the washington mall uh without taking into account that great care was uh, taken in that project to ensure that the whole vista is lined by public institutions and not by government buildings in fact the, the macmillan commission who pioneered that plan fought very hard to ensure that no uh, uh, there was pushback from some of the uh, federal government departments but uh, they fought very hard to ensure that it was completely a public space and not a governmental space whereas what we have done is what was a culture hub in the original latians plan functioned as a culture hub post independence uh, is now being turned into the spectacle of government hmm. prem i think this this is something very interesting and uh, you know at times government uh, thinks uh, and feels that you know public institutions and government both are congruent you know so there is there is no uh, but what what you have been saying is it's it's usurp of the public institutions by the government where is that thin line i mean what what demarcates between the two when public i mean you you can't just walk into a government building any time you want you have, you have to get a pass there are visiting hours uh, there is if i want to go to the national museum i can go at any time that the museum is open uh, the museum is open on weekends and uh, now yeah. this space will be a dead space on the uh, because all the uses surrounding it will shut down on weekends so uh, so the museum the indira gandhi center these these are public places the public could walk into them mm-hmm. and and then when you have public spaces like you know uh, flanking the lawns of uh, central vista uh, the rajpath lawns then those enliven the lawns because those that usage spills over and and yeah. it creates a whole very public nature to that landscape Uh, if you have government buildings which will shut down by six o'clock in the evening, which will be closed on weekends, and the whole vibrancy of that as a public space changes, and and the whole idea of okay. government in a democracy to me is to make it appear friendly and accessible, not make it dominating. There is now the yeah. spectacle of government is yeah. is uh, visually dominant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. They, uh, they mentioned okay, that yeah, another justification is that from rajpath you won't see the government buildings they're behind the trees but 
Rajpath is not the determining experience. You should talk about what the experience is from the lawns because those are the public spaces where pedestrians see it at a slower speed and scale. And there you can look under the trees, you can look through the trees and you will be aware of the spectacle of Kapi. Yeah. Okay, Brim, I think that th- this is something interesting that you I'm probably this is for the first time you're hearing, the spillover of the public space. I mean, it's not just the public, but you know, then the, 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 the land adjacent to it, I mean, you can just walk through that place. Tell me if I ask concretely, because I what I could make out from the initial plans, I think it's almost uh, 220 uh, acres of land which is being converted from public to government spaces. I mean, do we have the exact uh, number of uh, acres or, or the exact area I mean, which is going to get transformed? Because the government has been time and again saying, look, look nothing is going to happen. I mean, we are definitely constructing buildings, but we're not taking the public space. Um, I, we, I, we have to see, I, I, I haven't heard this number of 200. The, what I've heard is a number of about 80 odd acres on the main vista itself, which has been converted. Uh, now, they're saying the compensation of public space, they're talking about the uh, arboretum out of the president's estate, and they're talking about a new public park on the banks of the river. Neither of those are part of the main vista experience. Uh, they're talking about North and South Block being converted into the National Museum. Uh, however, the DDA change of land use uh, that was ratified does not change the land use of the North and South Block. And it changes the land use of the National Archives uh, parcel from public, yeah. as a public, semi-public to government office. Government, yeah. yeah. So, so, so those kind of statements are, are not uh, gelling with the land use uh, changes that we have affected. And uh, so that raises a concern that uh, they are uh, talking about North and South Block being converted into museums to just ride over this wave of loss of public space. And that eventually at some point they might say, oh, we've done a security assessment and uh, a space so close to the prime yeah. minister's house, vice president's house, yeah, and Rashtrapati yeah. Bhavan cannot be a major public space like this. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it turned out not to be possible. So, uh, so they need to be very, very explicit that they are making this commitment after a security assessment and they will abide by it. Okay, Prem. So uh, the, I think, yeah, yeah, please, please. The, please there's one other point I, I want to make is that uh, since there has been no disclosure, we do not know why so much space is being built. Uh, so I, I just like to show some illustrations here uh, of the Vista, and these are illustrations published by the architects, so they're, they're accurate as to the plans. And they compare, the, the first, first slide uh, compares the opening and uh, uh, the before and after, just as is, as published by the architect. If you go to the second slide, you see the land currently occupied by uh, uh, government office buildings before and after. And you see after much more land is given over to government office buildings. And if you go to the third slide, which just outlines these parcels uh, within which where the government office buildings are, you'll see that the average ground footprint of buildings there is much higher footprint higher but the average height of the new buildings is higher because the existing buildings average between five and seven floors whereas these buildings all consistently eight floors high so so they're building a lot more area than what uh, seems to be needed and they need to be very clear on what what really the needs are what are they building for Uh, i think that's a disclosure that is needed you know, giving the statistics per uh, capita availability of space, probably a minister is getting a space uh, equivalent to a, a football field. I mean, I, I mean, it's it's really uh, not just I funny, but know. serious. I mean, if that's true. Uh, see, in my experience uh, of many years of designing office buildings, the square foot per person varies uh, down to about uh, you know below hundred. Uh, square feet per person for an IT office, going up to about 250 square feet per person for a corporate headquarters. Okay. But in a corporate headquarters, the percentage of people in private cabins is very high. Okay. Uh, in my experience, a government office building should be more in the region of about 150 to 160 square feet per person. Okay. And if, if they're filling this with just the common secretariat, then that is that is uh, seems... I, one doesn't have data to judge, but just visually the impression seems to be that the space provision is far more lavish. 
So uh, any idea, what is the space that they're building per, per, uh, per capita? I mean? See, I don't know. They're in the EIA submission, they have said that the total built-up area is 17.21 lakh square meters on a land parcel of about 5 lakh square meters. Uh, but how much of that is uh, yeah. uh, office space? How much of that is uh, car parking? How much of that is the central conference center, which is also part of this uh, complex? Uh, that data I don't have, so I can't. I don't have an exact number. So, so it's just so like, it, it's just like visually okay. comparing the before and after conditions. It looks like a far more lavish allocation of space. Ah, so is is there a linkage that you? Tr I mean, can they can we build a linkage we do hypothetically to to actually uh, assess uh, that linkage? And you know, in, in the Supreme Court, the government was very categorically saying it's not a TOD, it's, it's not a uh, TOD project. But now we've seen to one of the replies uh, to, uh, to a news item from the Ministry of Housing of Urban Affairs, they say one of the guiding principles happens to be TOD. And we know what TOD is, you know, more to do with land monetization, housing and all that stuff. But is TOD also to do with a larger FAR and then eventually what you're saying, more space for or whatever is being planned, is it? Uh, the government has used the phrase transit-oriented development, but whether they're using it in the broad sense, saying the central secretariat today, secretariat is now connected to the metro, which will then have its own private underground rail link to all the buildings, uh, whether they're saying it in the general sense of being served by transit, or whether they're talking about the specific, specific use of the term where under the master plan, uh, TOT scheme is, can get exemption for higher FAR. Uh, that is not clear. Uh, if if uh, it is not the TOT exemption, and uh, on the one hand, the, the government has filed affidavits in the Supreme Court hearing, and you have to remember the hearings where before the plans on the central secretariat were made open for the EIA submission. Uh, so, uh -huh. and before they were, they were finalized in their current form also. So, but they've very explicitly said that the whole Central Vista project is not under the TOD exemptions for FAR. They're very, they've said that very explicitly. Uh, so if, so if that, if that so is... So we're not clear, I mean, what does that mean now? But, but if that, if that is the case, uh, somehow it doesn't gel uh, with the kind of built up density I'm seeing. I get the feeling that but, the built-up density is higher than what the allowable FPR is. Okay. Prem, it's just, I mean, just a hunch. I mean, maybe it's a very wild hunch. Uh, you know, we've seen the connection between the Prime Minister and the, the architect who's designing. We've seen also some of their works in Gujarat. And of course, you, uh, you know better than me uh, on that front. Uh, this is a hunch. I mean, DOD at this stage... Does it also mean land monetization, and then you know allowing, okay, this space. So let's hand over to uh, to to some some players in the market, and then you know we also get some money out of it. Do you think is that possible, or is it just a very wild hunch which has no relevance, no basis? But yeah, um, I don't know. I, I sense that it might be a, a wild hunch. I haven't seen any data on this and so I'm okay. reluctant to make any statement without seeing any data supporting this. Uh, if I, if I, if you were asked me to uh, sort of hazard a wild guess, I would think that the motivation is mo more similar to uh, what happened in Berlin in Albert Speer's uh, plans commissioned by Hitler to remake Berlin where they, the whole intent yeah. was to make governmental buildings of a certain scale, not necessarily okay. related to need but of a certain scale so that they struck awe in the citizenry. So, so the okay. citizen was struck mute by the spectacle of awe and grandeur, and therefore through that takes pride in, uh, in okay. work. So I, I suspect that might be the intention that they wanted a certain scale and grandeur of the, uh, the project, uh, and it didn't necessarily derive from actual analysis of needs. Okay. That's very interesting, eh? actually, uh, where you allow, uh, I mean, where in modern democracy, uh, you do not allow the citizens to actually uh, uh, come closer to, you know, the, uh, the, the centers of power and then just remind them, hey, you know, we are the rulers, you better, I mean, better, better be in, in tandem to what, what we say. I think that's very interesting, yeah. Uh, instead of being yeah, I, equal participants. 
I went yeah, yeah. on this in more detail in an essay titled "The Architecture of Democracy," where it was published in the India Forum. It's an online publication. Yeah, and in that I compared three major urban axes, which is Central Vista, the National Mall in Washington, and uh, Albert Speer's plan for Berlin. Yeah, and and actually Central Vista had a bit of the National Mall uh, intention in the original plan, and what eventually happened, which was to have cultural institutions at the hub. Okay, but uh, okay. if if the plan was being remade, they could have made the choice to reinforce that aspect of it, but they seem to have moved closer actually to the Albert Speer uh, model and make ah. it a place completely dominated by government lobbies. So, 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 and and you know, to claim that public space is created elsewhere uh, 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 is is which is not part of the Vista experience. I don't think is a valid explanation. And uh, if they are saying North and South Block will become public space, then uh, that should be backed by the land use changes, which it isn't right now. So, okay. and they should be open about the security assessment of a public space like that. Yeah. Great, Prem. I think thank you so much for uh, uh, making those uh, observations for uh, for actually uh, bringing in the perspective. I mean, I think that's that's something very important. Where what I could make out is actually it's a complete usurp of the public spaces, but at the same time also dominating. I mean, I mean the the whole idea of uh, of a dominating government. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is what we were laughing the other day. I mean, we're, uh, jokingly, we were we were share, sharing those anecdotes that look, we'll have, we'll be sitting on the lawns, but a sniper would always be pointing a gun at us. And uh, you know, that's that's the kind of uh, public spaces we 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 imagine. I mean, once once this is done. So thank you so much. But the last question, which I ask everyone, Ray, what next? What's going to happen? Uh, we have to keep resisting and see see what happens. Um, well, um, perhaps there's a middle path like uh, Gautam Bhatia, the architect who wrote recently in the Times of India, saying that maybe we have to ex accept that some uh, battles are lost, the parliament building is going to happen. But uh, let's at least keep the battle alive to reinvent the main vista itself. And uh, I mean, even, even if they build those office buildings, one can always repurpose office buildings into cultural institutions. So. So uh, maybe we should we should okay. keep fighting that battle. Yeah, I think we should keep fighting that battle. Thank you so much for joining us.